guys, how's it going? It's Mystic here from Lunashi Academy. In today's video, I will be giving you guys the ultimate Axie Infinity PvP breakdown. Because as we all know, winning these PvP games rewards players with SLP, an in-game currency that has real world value. The better you are at the game, the more money you can earn. But before starting, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to us for weekly Axie Infinity content. For those who are still new to Axie Infinity, this game combines aspects of several other games such as Pokemon, Hearthstone, and Rock Paper Scissors to create a unique strategy game that is both easy to pick up and difficult to master. In PvP, trainers are able to go into battle, each with a team of three specially selected Axies and battle it out to determine which team is victorious. In Axie Infinity, there are 9 different classes of Axies, with there being 6 basic classes and 3 unique classes. For simplicity's sake, we will only be covering the 6 basic classes in today's video, and we can make a separate video about the other 3 classes later down the line. To begin, the 6 basic classes of Axies are Plant, Aqua, Beast, Bird, Reptile, and Bug. Each of these classes are unique in their own right and have their own sets of characteristics and strengths against other classes. For example, plants and reptiles are strong against bird and aquas, bird and aquas are strong against beasts and bugs, and finally, beasts and bugs are strong against plants and reptiles. Let's dive right into our first class, with that being plants. Plant axes fall under a major role as tanks. Tanks soak up large amounts of damage so that the other team members may be able to survive and counterattack. Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of plants. First being the pros. Plants come with the highest HP of all other axes. There are a variety of tank cards in the plant class such as October Treat for extra shield, Drain Bite and Healing Aroma for healing and a mix of damage, or you can look into some utility cards such as Vegetal Bite, which can steal your opponent's energy, or cards like Hot Butt and Leak Leak, which can disable your opponent's axes. Plant axes are also fairly easy to use and don't require a learning curve to use. However, some cons to playing plants are, due to their high HP, plants are often the slowest axes on the team, meaning they attack last. Plants are great tanks, but are somewhat limited to their role, as plants cannot be the main damage dealers on the team. When searching for a new plant tank on the market, look for ones with high shield cards such as October Tree or Aqua Stock. A quick disclaimer, although many players believe that it is always best to go for pure axes, you can still get some valuable cards and stats from other classes. Our suggestions for plant axes for beginners are a damage tank, a leaf bug tank, or an anti-aqua tank. Damage tanks run either a prickly trap or a wooden stab for that extra damage. Leaf bug tanks would run a leaf bug, as you could have imagined, for that extra energy gain. And anti aqua tanks would run an aqua stock to generate an energy for every aquatic cards that hits them. This is especially useful for those pesky double aqua builds. Overall, plants can sustain a lot of damage, whether through shield cards or heal cards, and can provide a lot of defense that is necessary for the team. Next, we have the aquatic axes, or often referred to as aquas. Aquas are quite contrasting to plants, and their playstyle is noticeably different. Let's go through the pros and cons to aquas. First, they are the second fastest class of axes in the game, after birds, and often attack either first or second in the round. In addition to the high speed, aquas are also bruisers as they have a fair amount of health, with pure aquas having around 420 HP, which lets them survive more attacks than some of the other classes. Aquas also have a wide variety of cards that range from high damage, energy generation, utility, and heal. This allows them to be played in a variety of different ways, making them great addition to many teams. In addition, Aquas are quite simple to play, which is great for beginner players who are still trying to learn the game. However, some downsides to Aquas are, they tend to lack defensive stats, aside from a few such as Sponge, Teal Shell, and Hermit, which means that the role on a team is a little more one-dimensional. 
Aquas are also very linear to play, and it is easy for an experienced player to predict the Aquas moves and they can be countered fairly easily. When looking for Aquas on the market, look for 6 out of 6 pure Aqua Axes to get the highest speed stats. Here are 3 meta builds that can often be seen in PvP. There is the Max Heal, which has double an enemy for the crazy heals, Nemo for the energy generation, and Lamb for extra damage when low health. Next up is the Idle Killer. The Idle Killer has Perch to target an idle target, Babylonia for extra damage on the idle target, Risky Fish as a high damage card, and Koi for additional speed as there is no goldfish. And lastly, we have the Backdoor Aqua. This has Shrimp to target the farthest enemy, Oranda, a high stat and damage card, Risky Fish and Blue Moon, also high damage and stat cards. Overall, Aquas are great beginner axes as they are the jack of all trades in Axie Infinity due to their class stats and overall versatility. Up next we have Beasts. Beasts are arguably the hardest hitting axes in the game and can dish out insane damage when fully comboed. Let's take a look at some of the pros. Beasts also have a very, very high damage output and can virtually one combo most axes in the game. They are also capable of one hitting the enemy plant tank in the first round if you have the correct cards. Beasts also have several utility cards that allow them to either generate, steal, or destroy your opponent's energy, which can prove to be very useful in game. They are also quite beginner friendly and don't require a lot of in game knowledge to play. In addition to all of that, Beasts have the highest morale of any axes in the game, which allows them to crit and go into last stand much more often than the other classes. However, some downsides to Beasts are, while they have such high damage, they lack both speed and HP, which results in the Beasts attacking near the middle of the round. This means that they will only get a chance to attack after the Aquas and Birds have already gone. In addition, due to their low HP, they can be taken out quite easily if left open. Finally, certain beast builds focus a little too much on combos and a bad draw can disrupt their ability to dish out keyboard breaking damage. When looking for beasts on the market, it is quite simple. You can either look for a pure beast with the highest morale or sacrifice a little bit of that morale by getting an aqua or bird part. Some other things to consider when looking for beasts on the market are Don't go for a beast with only one nutcrack ability Don't get a beast with imp that doesn't have ronin And that getting high damage bird or aqua parts can also be very viable in pvp such as the perch beast Some meta beast builds at the moment are the rimp, the ramp, and the card draw beast The rimp beast plays ronin for the guaranteed crit Imp for the energy generation from the Ronin, and Double Nut for that additional damage. Rant Beasts are focused on max damage and play Ronin, Dual Blade, and Double Nut. And the last build, the Card Draw Beast, plays Hero for the Card Draw, either Dual Blade or Arco for the damage and speed, Hair for the Card Draw and damage, and Axie Kiss for damage and lethal. Overall, beasts are great additions to the team as they can dish out stupid damage but are quite squishy on their own. Up next are the notorious backdoor killers aka birds. These axes are fast and they sure as heck pack a punch. With some of the highest damage cards coming from the bird class, these axes are no joke. Let's take a look at some of the pros. Birds are the fastest class in the game, surpassing even pure aquas in speed and they are almost always guaranteed to attack first. Birds are very raw damage oriented as opposed to beasts who have crits and they can dish out immense damage from pure stats alone. They are also some of the best backliners and as they possess great 1v1 potential. In addition, birds possess utility cards that can either target specific classes or even directly attack the fastest enemy on the team, which can prove to be incredibly useful. However, no class is perfect, and similar to beasts, birds are the glass cannons of Axie, and although they can dish out stupid damage, they are very fragile like my ego. <clears throat> Bird Axies 
are around 300 HP and in most cases require 3 to 4 cards to fully wipe out. A lot of bird cards do not possess high shield stats so they are not able to defend themselves. But you know what they say, the best defense is great offense. When looking for a bird, it is important that you understand what build you are trying to go for as birds can be somewhat combo reliant. With birds however, you would always want to look for a pure axi to ensure that you attack first. Here are some common bird builds that you can see. There is the backdoor bird with dark swoop to target the fastest enemy, egg bomb for damage and aroma, blackmail for damage and to be able to remove all debuffs from yourself and either post fight or last feather for that finishing blow. Then there's double talk which puts the enemy to sleep and bypasses any shield with it also having egg bomb, blackmail and post fight for the damage. And the max damage bird build is Peace Treaty, Kingfisher, Kestrel, and Post Fight. You do not want to go up against that. Jumping right into our next class, we have Reptiles. Reptiles are a tricky class to narrow down as they can come in all different shapes and sizes and can widely range in uses. Do you want a pure damage dealing Axie? Sure thing! Do you want a utility bruiser with a stun and damage reflection? No problem! Do you want a poison stacking, poof flinging, backdoor disabled tank? By all means! With that being said, narrowing down the pros and cons for this class will be a little more tricky. Let's start off with the pros. As I already mentioned, reptiles have some of the greatest utility and range in the game. You can find a reptile to suit practically all of your needs and can be incorporated into most roles of a team. Reptiles also have a very all around stat line. They have more health and morale than an aqua and the same speed as beasts, all the while having much more utility. Reptiles also possess a lot of debuffs, which adds a new dimension to playing as they can really sway the match in your favor. Some downsides to reptiles are, reptiles can still get bursted by other builds despite their stats and utility. And since there are so many different ways to play reptiles, it requires a fair amount of PvP knowledge and as a result is not very beginner friendly. When looking for reptiles on the market, here are a few different builds that you can go for, such as Termes, which plays Sticky Goo for the defensive stats and the stun, Mystic for a slow, Allergic Reaction for extra damage on a debuff target, and Chomp for the stun. There's the Bone Sail Midliner, which plays Bone Sail for the card draw and stats, Chomp for the stun, Disarm for the damage and the slow, and Venom Spray to stack poison. And lastly, there's the Tri Spiker, with a Tri Spiker running Tri Spikes to target the enemy with the lowest shield, Disarm for the damage and slow, Allergic for extra damage, and Chomp for the stun. Overall, Reptiles are a very good and versatile team that can be used in many different team comps, which allows them to be a very dynamic and creative play. Lastly, we will be discussing the Bug class. This class is very unique and has a very specific use and playstyle to it. Some pros to bugs are, this class is considered the debuff class, providing stuns, poisons, slows, fears, disables, and many other debuffs on the enemy. Bugs have an immense amount of utility, as a lot of the best cards in the game are bug class cards such as Terra Chomp, Gravelant, Allergic Reaction, Garish Worm, and many many more. Bugs also have the second highest morale in the game after beasts and can also deal out monster damage. Some cons to bugs however are, bugs are extremely slow, being the second slowest class in the game which means they attack second last, just before plants. However, unlike plants, bugs do not come with the same HP for the low speed and are still quite squishy. And of course, here are a few bug builds that you can look for on the market. There is the Melee Disable, which plays Gravelant for the Melee Disable, Sticky Goo for the Shield and Stun, and any high damage range card and preferably a heal card as well for sustain. There is the Discard Bug, which plays Third Glance and Sunderclaw both for the Discard, Sticky Goo for the Shield and Stun, and Anesthetic Belt also for the Shield and Stun. Then, there is the Max Damage Antenna build, which plays Bug Signal to steal energy, Sandal for really high damage, Cute Bunny for the tear, and Allergic Reaction for the additional debuff damage. To conclude, the bug class is heavily focused on debuffs and weakening the enemy team, and to do this, it gives up quite a bit of speed and HP. 
With that being said, don't discount bugs just because of this, as they still have many, many uses in the game and are very valuable. Well, that summarizes the six basic classes in Axie Infinity. I hope you learned something today and that you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and we would really appreciate it if you can crit that like and subscribe button for all your Axie Infinity needs. Also, make sure to follow us on Twitter and join our Discord. Both links are in the description. With that being said, Mystic out, cue the music.